This single tooth rewrote what we thought we knew about evolution's apex predators. For 20 million years, Megalodon ruled our oceans with seven inch serrated blades, proof of a bite twice as strong as Tyrannosaurus rex and an appetite needing over a ton of whale meat every day. Yet while these teeth mark the most powerful hunter in ocean history, they also expose evolution's deadliest design flaw, absolute reliance on one prey, masking a hidden extinction trap. If dominance means survival, why did every megalodon vanish in a world where lesser sharks thrived? The answer lies buried in the very anatomy of this tooth, and what it reveals will challenge everything you believe about nature's invincibility. At the heart of paleontology's most decisive lab session sat a single fossil, a megalodon tooth measuring 7.48 inches from root to tip. This specimen, catalogued from the Pisco Formation in Peru, dwarfs the largest teeth of any living shark, three times the size of a great white's. Its mass and symmetry made it the gold standard for biomechanical analysis. University of Zurich researchers subjected the tooth to high-resolution CT scanning, capturing every contour, serration, and root channel in digital detail. Over 48 hours, software reconstructed the geometry, correcting for fossilization shrinkage and mineral infill. The result? A precise 3D model, ready for stress tests. From these scans, the team calculated jaw dimensions and simulated muscle attachments, feeding the data into bite force algorithms. The numbers were staggering. At peak closure, the megalodon's jaws would have delivered 40,000 pounds per square inch, enough to crush a small car or bisect a whale vertebra in a single snap. Every measurement from enamel thickness to root volume was cross-checked against museum specimens from Florida, London, and Washington, DC. The protocols demanded repeatability, laser calipers, micro CT overlays, and SEM imaging all confirmed the tooth's authenticity and function. This was no outlier. Dozens of similarly massive teeth from Panama to South Carolina have passed identical scrutiny. Their geometry, broad triangular crowns with double serrated edges, anchors the narrative in verifiable evidence. The power encoded in this single fossil offers a forensic baseline for everything that follows, an apex predator's weapon, measured and proven in the lab, not just legend. For nearly 20 million years, Megalodon ruled the world's oceans. Its fossilized teeth turn up in marine sediments from Japan to Morocco, Peru to the Carolinas, each one a silent witness to its global reach. These teeth crowd museum drawers by the hundreds, yet every specimen tells the same story, a predator at the absolute top, unmatched in size and power. No other marine animal left behind such an overwhelming record of dominance. The Miocene and Pliocene epochs belong to Megalodon, from the balmy tropics to temperate shores. The scale of its reign is almost incomprehensible. Entire continents yield their teeth layer after layer for millions of years. Then the fossil record goes quiet. The last confirmed megalodon tooth is dated at 3.6 million years old. After that, nothing. Not a single reliable specimen, despite decades of core drilling, dredge hauls, and fossil hunting on every continent except Antarctica. The abundance that once defined megalodon's presence collapses into absence. Meanwhile, smaller sharks with less imposing teeth, great whites, mucos, sand tigers, persist through the same deposits, their lineages continuing to the present. How does a predator so thoroughly entrenched in every ocean simply vanish? What changed in the world seas that could erase a species at the peak of evolutionary success? The timeline, spelled out in tooth after tooth, demands an answer. To find it, the focus turns to design, what made Megalodon so dominant, and whether that very perfection held the key to its undoing. Under magnification, the Megalodon tooth transforms from a blunt weapon into a precision-engineered cutting tool. Along each edge, serrations stand out, 
tiny saw-like notches spaced just two to three millimeters apart. Scanning electron microscopy reveals these are not random chips, but uniform ridges, each one sharpened by millions of years of evolutionary trial. The pattern is unmistakable, fine enough to glide through thick layers of whale blubber, yet deep enough to catch and shear bone during the initial bite. No modern fish or seal offers the same resistance, and the spacing is all wrong for handling scales or fur. Surface analysis tells the rest of the story. Oblique scratches run parallel to the serrated margin, evidence of repeated sawing against dense tissue. Interspersed among them, clusters of micro pits and short jagged fractures point to frequent bone contact, exactly what happens when a predator bites into a whale carcass. The density of these features is quantifiable, up to 55 scratches per square millimetre, with pit counts rising in lateral teeth used for tearing. Even the tip shows a distinct kind of wear. Micro fractures and polished facets mark where the crown met resistance, likely from vertebrae or ribs. In every metric, the wear matches experimental feeding studies with whale analogues, not with fish or smaller marine mammals. The forensic fingerprint is clear. This tooth was built and used almost exclusively for dispatching and dismembering massive whales. Every scratch, chip and polished groove confirms a diet as specialized as the tool itself. Finite element analysis, or FEA, mapped the stress landscape of Megalodon's tooth in vivid color. Under simulated bite loads, force concentrated along the serrated edges and flowed down the robust crown toward the root. The stress maps glowed hottest, where the tooth would slice through blubber and bone, confirming that every millimeter of geometry was tuned for maximum efficiency against massive prey. Unlike the versatile, multi-purpose teeth of smaller sharks, this design left no margin for error. Each bite demanded precision and power. Scaling rules drawn from tooth size and jaw models put the average adult megalodon at over 55 feet in length. That's nearly the length of a city bus, with a jaw span broad enough to engulf a grown human whole. But that scale came with a price. Metabolic calculations. Grounded in modern shark physiology and adjusted for megalodon's mass, reveal a daily requirement of at least 2,500 pounds of meat, roughly the weight of a compact car. Only the richest prey, like whales, could meet that demand. The energy equation was unforgiving. Every pound of muscle and every square inch of tooth was an investment in brute force, but also a liability if the food supply faltered. The same mechanics that made Megalodon unstoppable in a sea full of whales set the stage for a dependency that no amount of power could overcome. Southern resident killer whales patrol the waters off the Pacific Northwest, easily recognized by their black and white markings and tight family groups. But beneath the surface, their survival depends on a single species, Chinook salmon. These orcas are apex predators by reputation, yet nearly every calorie in their diet comes from this one fish. When Chinook runs dwindle, the whales have almost nothing to fall back on. In 2018, a young female known as J50 became the face of this dependency trap. Scientists tracked her shrinking frame and lethargic movements as salmon numbers hit record lows. Despite round-the-clock monitoring and emergency feeding attempts, she starved to death before her fourth birthday. The event played out in real time, with conservation teams recording every detail, weight loss, failed hunts, even the pod's attempts to support her. J50's decline wasn't an isolated tragedy. Other members of the southern resident population showed similar signs their bodies thinning as Chinook vanished from their hunting grounds. Dietary studies confirm the extent of this reliance. Over 95% of their annual intake is Chinook, with only rare, opportunistic catches of other fish. Attempts to switch prey haven't succeeded. Their hunting techniques, social structure, and even vocalizations are all tuned to tracking and capturing this one salmon species. When the fish disappear, so do the whale's options. The parallels to Megalodon's predicament are impossible to ignore. A top predator 
perfectly adapted for a single prey, left with nothing when the ecosystem shifts. The fossil record will soon reveal how this pattern played out on a global scale. In the sediment beds of Panama's Gatun formation, the fossil record delivers its first warning. Five million years ago, megalodon teeth were common here, broad, serrated and perfectly preserved in the ancient estuary muds. Field teams counted dozens of specimens per cubic metre, a density rivalling any Miocene marine site worldwide. But then, the numbers plummet, stratigraphic logs from the upper Gatun, cross-referenced at the Smithsonian and Florida Museum, show a sharp drop in tooth abundance just above the 5 million year boundary. In layers dated by volcanic ash and microfossil markers, megalodon teeth become rare, then vanish altogether. This isn't a sampling fluke. The same sediment layers yield abundant teeth from smaller sharks. Great whites, makos, even sand tigers, each with their own distinctive profiles. Only the largest predator disappears. Quantitative surveys led by Dr. Catalina Pimiento mapped the decline in painstaking detail from over 60 megalodon teeth per square meter in lower beds to fewer than five in the uppermost strata. The timing matches the onset of global ocean cooling. Paleoceanographic data from foraminifera reveal falling sea temperatures, while baleen whale fossils in the same beds thin out and shift northward. Megalodon, locked to warm tropical waters and giant prey, faces an ecological bottleneck. The Garton Formation becomes the first clear signal, a tropical stronghold turning into a graveyard. The pattern is set. Next, the collapse moves north toward Florida's Bone Valley. Florida's Bone Valley Formation offers the clearest record of Megalodon's final years in the tropics. In Pliocene strata, paleontologists catalogued hundreds of massive teeth, some over six inches long, layered among fossilized whale bones and rays. But as the timeline advances, the numbers dwindle. By 4.5 million years ago, systematic surveys show tooth counts dropping from dozens per sediment block to just a handful. The decline isn't random. Radiometric dating and volcanic ash markers confirm a steady, northward contraction as ocean temperatures fell and whale populations shifted toward cooler latitudes. Virginia's Yorktown formation picks up the story. Here, fossil hunters and museum teams recovered the last reliable megalodon teeth on the Atlantic seaboard, scattered through deposits dated between 4.2 and 3.6 million years ago. Each specimen was logged, measured, and cross-checked by dating specialists using microfossil and isotope signatures. The trend is unmistakable. While smaller sharks continue in abundance, megalodon teeth thin out, then vanish entirely above the youngest datable layers. The last confirmed tooth, catalogued at 3.6 million years old, seals the verdict. No later specimen has ever passed peer review, despite exhaustive drilling and fossil audits from Florida to the Carolinas. The extinction arc is complete. What began as a slow fade in tropical Panama ends with silence in the temperate Atlantic. The world's most powerful predator, tracked formation by formation, disappears not in a sudden cataclysm, but in a drawn out retreat, leaving only a trail of teeth as evidence. Blue whales, the largest animals on earth, owe their survival to dense clouds of krill, tiny crustaceans that swarm in polar waters each summer. One adult blue whale can eat up to four tons of krill in a single day, but only when conditions align. As oceans warm and acidify, krill populations shrink and shift poleward. In years when the blooms collapse, blue whale feeding grounds become empty deserts. Scientists tracking tagged whales have documented migrations that now stretch hundreds of miles farther than a decade ago, chasing ever more elusive prey. When krill densities fall below a critical threshold, entire pods abandon traditional feeding sites and birth rates plummet. Polar bears face a different trap. Their entire hunting strategy depends on sea ice, the only platform sturdy enough for stalking seals. 
satellite records show Arctic sea ice has declined by more than 40% since 1980. As the ice vanishes, so do the bears' hunting grounds. Field researchers have logged increasing numbers of bears swimming long distances or scavenging on land, but these desperate efforts rarely offset lost seal hunts. Cubs born in lean years weigh less and survival rates sink with each failed season. Great hammerhead sharks, once common in tropical shallows, specialize in hunting stingrays buried in sand. But overfishing and habitat loss have decimated ray populations. Surveys in the Western Atlantic report hammerhead numbers down by more than 80% in just three generations. Unlike smaller, more adaptable sharks, hammerheads rarely switch prey and their populations crash when rays vanish. Across the world's oceans, the same pattern repeats. Power and size offer no protection when a predator's only food source disappears. Rumours of megalodon's survival surface every few years, fueled by dramatic headlines, viral videos, and even a televised mockumentary that aired on national cable in 2013. Yet the evidence behind these claims evaporates under scrutiny. Museum audits, including the Smithsonian, Florida Museum, and Natural History Museum in London, have catalogued tens of thousands of marine fossils from the last four million years. Not a single megalodon tooth appears in any layer younger than the Pliocene. Every specimen submitted as post-extinction has failed peer review, misidentified, misplaced, or outright fabricated. Internal documents from the infamous Shark Week episode later revealed that so-called experts were reading from scripts and staged footage was passed off as authentic. Real paleontologists issued public statements demanding corrections and a return to evidence-based coverage. The fossil record is not silent, it is exhaustive. Deep sea cores, trawl nets and riverbeds have yielded a continuous archive of shark teeth great whites, makos, even ancient sand tigers, persisting right through to the present. Megalodon, by contrast, vanishes without a trace after 3.6 million years ago. This absence is not a gap, it is a verdict. The world's largest predator left a trail of teeth across every ocean, and then nothing. No mysterious survivors, no hidden populations lurking in the abyss. The lesson is written in enamel and stone, Evolutionary power is no guarantee against extinction. When the only tool is a perfect weapon for a vanished prey, even the mightiest fall. The myth is entertaining, but the evidence is final. Megalodon teeth over seven inches long, as documented in Smithsonian and Peruvian collections, prove this shark ruled the oceans for 20 million years with unmatched power and a bite force exceeding 40,000 pounds per square inch. Yet the same fossil record shows that after thriving in every ocean except Antarctica, Megalodon vanished entirely 3.6 million years ago, leaving only teeth as evidence. The tooth serration patterns, wear marks, and consistent shape reveal a deadly flaw, absolute dependence on large whale prey and warm waters. Fossil abundance graphs and geological timelines confirm extinction was gradual starting in the tropics as whales migrated to colder seas. No megalodon teeth have been found from after the Pliocene, despite exhaustive marine fossil sampling. Still, some questions remain, such as the exact sequence of whale population shifts and whether any megalodon individuals tried to adapt. Today, modern predators like orcas and blue whales face similar traps when their specialized food sources decline. The evidence is clear. In evolution, dominance without flexibility leads to extinction. The megalodon tooth is not just a relic, it's a warning written in enamel.